Come follow the brick wall. It's your girl Eva K, and I'm ready to eat. Hey, who ready to eat with me? Who ready to eat? Come bread with me, let's break bread. Come break bread with me, let's break bread. We about to eat the food and get fed. Come break. Hey, it's your girl, your host Eva K, and I am here with this king, Mr. Dominique Nico Terry. Woo! I didn't know what to call you. What you want to go by? Nico. King. Or Nico. Or DT. Say Nico. Nico. I like Nico. I like Nico. <laughs> Y'all, okay, so we have two sponsors today. One is Brandy over at Takeoff Traveling. Hey, girl. Hey, thank you. And then Miss Tyrissa Burdine over at Tang by Ty. Go get your little oils. Get your hair done. She's in Atlanta, but she travels. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We got some fish. Uh-huh. Some chicken. <laughs> some fried green tomatoes. So, we got a lot to talk about. Okay. So, because it's funny how I even got to know who you were. And I can't wait to tell that story. <laughs> you okay? So, we're going to say our grace. And then we're going to get in and eat. Now we thank you. Now we thank you for our food. For our food. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we thank you. Amen. 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 It's my song. Yes. <laughs> you have to put a beat to it. And as always, thank you to Jabari over at VMA Studios for letting me use his lovely, luscious studio. Yes, sir. All right, so Nico. Yes, ma'am. I'm hungry. Uh, me too. Listen, let me tell y'all how I got to know about Nico, right? So I got an email. I got a DM. <laughs> I got a Facebook message from a sweet lady that goes to his church. And she was like, first it scared me. Because she was like, um, is this Eva Kyle? I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, um, so yeah, I was at church in my church group and your name came up. I was like, oh God, they're about to kick me out of the church. What I done said, Lord, what I done did. <laughs> and she was like, I got a sweet young gentleman by the name of Nico, who I would love to have you, you know, have you do an interview with him and get him on your show about his organization. So, you know, I got the white mom, you know. So, yeah, she said, please call him. I called him that same night. He's going to say, how you get my number? <laughs> <laughs> nah, because it, it said, it said Dallas Kyle. So, I was like, Dallas Kyle. But mm -hmm. I was watching, I was watching her show when she called. So, I was like, hold on. I'm looking around the room like, is there cameras? Put some hidden cameras there or something? <laughs> he was like, I'm literally watching you. And you done called me? I was like, yes. I was watching you and Susie. It's me, Oprah of the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nico. Yes, ma'am. Tell me something about yourself. You so handsome. Uh, I'm 18. You 18. I got four brothers. I mean, three <laughs> three brothers and one sister. One of the brothers here. Yeah, one of them here is named D, but he camera shy. Uh, Shout out to D. I love to eat. I love shoes. I love cars. That's it. I don't know. Where did you grow up at? East side. East side. So did you go, what school you went to? All right. So I went to Carter. No, wait a minute. Like from the beginning or? Mm -hmm. Well, middle school, high school. I went to Carter Middle School. Mm -hmm. And then I got kicked out of Carter like every year. So I was at Richard Yokely and Ridgedale. For being bad? Yeah, I was bad. What were you doing, Nico? I got suspended like every week. But see, I used to hide the suspension papers. I, I wouldn't give them to my mama until the day it was time to get on the bus. So if we was getting on the bus at 7, I'd be like, here you go, mama. And I had to go back in my room. It was easier on me. But then I went to Central. I got kicked out of there. I uh, I had punched somebody and got suspended for like 144 days. What? You are so sweet. I would have never. Nah, thank you. I'm close to you hitting. Like, don't hit me. Mm. And then I went to Richard Oakley. That was the best time of my life. At Richard Yeltsin? Yeah, then I went back to Central. And then it was just... Mm, but school's not for everybody. So when did you graduate? Because you you just a fresh 18, This right? year. This year. So you graduated I early? Finished, I finished in like a month or two. Oh, so you still in high school? Yeah, in a way. Yeah. I got into some stuff, so I didn't get to finish when I was supposed to. 
Nico, what did you do? That suspension, that really threw me out. Like, that suspension was like two years I missed school almost. And then when the, the pandemic hit, so did they let you do virtual? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. When the pandemic hit, when the pandemic hit, I was supposed to be done. Like, mm -hmm. I had a plan, but the pandemic school closed. Mm -hmm. So my plan just was over with. So I had to come up with something else, but I'll be done this year. So, so are you going to prom or anything? No. Mm -hmm. Why you do all that? I don't want to go to prom. Okay. So tell me about your organization. What kind of organization do you have? Terry's Give Back Organization is a homeless organization. It didn't start out like that, though. I ain't gonna lie. At first, I was talking to my daddy. I was trying to see, like, what people would think. You know, some people take it as a joke, which they did take it as a joke. That you want to get back to the homies? Yeah, like, my mama, she brushed it off. She was like, yeah, whatever. My daddy, he was like, he knew I was serious, but I don't think he knew, like, is he going to, like, when I told him, he was like, oh, you want my money to do it? <laughs> so it's going to be Cameron's organization? I was like, nah, it's going to be Terry's Get Back. So, I had an Xbox and I sold it and I made like, I don't know, three, four hundred dollars too, something like that. And then I went to Sam's and I bought hot dogs, bread, just dumb stuff. You know, like not, not knowing what they to would feed want. Them? Yeah. Oh, okay. To feed the homeless. So we went down there. We was down there for like five hours. We didn't know how to start the uh, burner. My daddy had bought a burner. We didn't know how to start it. None of that. So we was down there for five hours in the sun, just cooking. And then we we sold, I said so. We gave out like 300 hot dogs. Oh, wow. Then I was like, okay, cool. My mama came and she was like, oh, he was for real. So they started seeing I was for real. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, let's make a page. See what people do. I made a page. My first night making a page, I had like 348 people just hit it. Like, not text me or anything. They just added the page, went through it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's do another event. We did another event. We gave out like a thousand shoes, thousand pants, thousand shirts, all that. Where, where did you get the thousand clothes, the thousand pants, shoes, and shirts? Where did you get all that stuff from? My three. Okay, well, I got five people that support, like, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. But two of them gave clothes. So my daddy, the one thing about my daddy, he gave all his clothes. Like, I promise you, we went in his room, everything in there he gave. And he, re he restarted over. Shoes and all. My little brother can tell you. All my daddy's shoes was out there. He restarted. So... Then my uncle, he gave all his stuff. His name Antonio. He gave everything, like two trucks full, everything. But then we messed up. We didn't have women clothes. Mm -hmm. So the women was begging my mama, like, do you got this? Do you got that? So I'm like, we got to do something for the women. That's how I came up with my, uh, what did we call it? Hygiene, but it was really more for the women. Mm -hmm. I had tampons. Uh, whatever you know, whatever they use for that, deodorant, shade, razors, everything. Oh, that is so sweet. <clears throat> so around that fourth one, and I think that's when that's when everybody caught on. Like, all right, he for real. Mm -hmm. so it just started going up from there. So, do you do it by yourself or do you cope? No, nah, uh, my four siblings, my mama, my daddy, and then well, when my daddy was alive, my daddy, and then my granny and granddaddy. But I, like I said, I got three solid. Five solid supporters. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made a Facebook post about them the other day. Uh, when you posted the video mm -hmm. about the video, I made a post about them. Like, no matter what it is, if I text them right now and say, I'm having an event tomorrow, they send it something by midnight, no matter what it is. That's awesome. That's how my show works, all straight supporters. So that's awesome. Now, I want to get back on this, but I want to <coughs> touch on your father. Yes, sir. I mean, his man. Because you, your dad just passed in August. In August. Yeah. So, rest in peace to your dad. My dad passed August 16th, 2020. Who told me that? No, I didn't tell you. Because I felt like I was going to have a deeper connection with you. Because actually, you remind me so much of my brother, Preston. Um, that it, it, it kills me. You got the 16? same height, bill, everything. Yes. 8-16-2020. My dad was 20. Wow. That's crazy. Was it spontaneous? Like No, nah, he got COVID. He, he fought it for like 25 days. He, he went to the hospital in July 27th. It didn't come out, well, you know, 20 if he died. So he was in there 20, 25 days. Your daddy died of COVID. That's why I tell people don't play with it. It's real. I was just about to ask you, like, with your organization, how has COVID changed your life? And that just changed the whole question. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect that, though. I ain't going to lie. I did not expect that. Like, you know what's crazy, though? We we joked about it in the room. Like, daddy, 
See, I wear masks. See, my family, my granny, when she see this video, she gonna feel some type of way. But what she do is, I don't like to be in the house. Mm -hmm. But just because I'm not in the house don't mean I'm in everybody's face. I might be in my car sitting outside somewhere chilling. Mm -hmm. So she'll be like, you in everybody's face, wear your mask. So I be having my mask on, but I don't be nowhere. I be like, as Zaxby's in the parking lot, chilling, mm -hmm. eating my food. She think I'm partying or something. So my daddy was in the room, <clears throat> and I was like, daddy, you know, you got to start wearing your mask. He had masks, but... He didn't really go nowhere, so he was like, I don't need to worry, you feel me? I'm just going to the shell and back home. So we was in the room, I was like, yeah, you know, wear your mask. He was like, you know, you can get it. I said, yeah, you right, I can get it. But my immune system's strong, I'm gonna fight it off. He was like, well, you know, my name, if I got it, I would die. And a week later, I kid you not, a week later, he was sick. And I was like, I texted my friend, I still got the messages. We was we had went out of town, I was like, dude, he's sick. I texted my friend, I said, I think I'm finna lose my daddy. She was like, why you say that? She was like, don't say that, you know, just telling me not to think like that. And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I know my daddy when he's sick. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't him. Mm -hmm. And she was like, nah, don't say that. And then, like, a week later, it happened. I was like, and I told him, I got the messages. I was like, daddy, you got, when I was watching him, I was texting him like, daddy, you got COVID. We need to go get tested. I can tell you got it. Woody, woody, woody. But he was hiding stuff from me. Like, he was like, mm. uh, I gave him a popsicle. My mama told me to give him a popsicle. And he was like, I can taste this. And I was like, what you mean you can taste this? You ain't been tasting nothing? And he didn't tell me that. So I was like, oh, yeah, I knew it. I just knew it, though. But it was just weird how it played out. Like, how, he, how we had that conversation. And then boom. So that was 25. It was a long 25 days. Wow, you the oldest? Out of my siblings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how has that been for you now that you have to step up to be the man of the family and then this is just so sudden, you know, with everything going on? Well, I didn't grow up. Well, yes, I did. Maybe like, my parents divorced. Mm -hmm. So my daddy stayed in Powell. My mama stayed on the East. So it's like them four is with my mama, the rest of them. And I'm with my daddy. So, I don't know. Like, that 25 days, I really think it mentally got me together. Like, because when he's in hospital, I stayed at, at his house. Those 25 days. Made sure the bills was paid, all that. I think that got me, was slowly getting me together for, like, all right, Dominique, life about to kick in. So, get ready. Mm -hmm. So, that 25 days, I think it got me mentally prepared for all this. Now, I ain't going to say I was prepared, you know, to lose my daddy. But, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it. He instilled so much in me from, like I said, two two different households. My mama's A, my daddy's Z. E. So it's like, all right, I got this mindset and this mindset. So putting them together, I, I just don't know. The mindset I got is crazy. But if it went for my daddy, I don't know. These twenty five, these twenty five days, and from after that to now, I don't. I probably wouldn't. Have. I probably would have crashed out. I ain't even gonna lie to you. So how are you mentally with that? Because you know, I I was thirty when I lost my daddy, Dominique. 30. But I watched him in the hospital. You know, my daddy's been, his health was also declining. He didn't get COVID, but he had congestive heart failure. When they couldn't find him a donor for his heart, you know, his machine kept, his defibrillator kept shocking him. We kind of knew, you know, what was going to happen because his heart was very, very, very sick. But that is traumatizing. How? You said how what? How is it? How am I mentally? Yeah, how are you mentally? Um... On the 16th day, I won't forget it. That was gonna put him in a coma to see if it uh, let the medicine do its job. Cause his body was fighting the medicine off, which was good. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted his body to do. Mm -hmm. But they wanted it to really go, like, you know, work in his body. His body wouldn't let it. So he, that was gonna, he called me, he called everybody. And I kept calling him like, why he not calling me? I'm calling him, why you not answering? So he called, he was like, son, and I was like, what's up? Now, I don't know, I, that's why I say it was God. I, I'm a Christian, I, I, you can't change that because, especially with that, like I said, that 25 days, that just showed me. But I was like, dude, I gotta talk to him, I gotta talk to him. I couldn't see him, you know? Went to the hospital, when they seen something, they was like, oh, it gotta be COVID. So they shut the room off. Mm -hmm. And I went outside to go talk to my mama, and that was it, that was like, I didn't see him no more in person. Mm -hmm. FaceTimes wouldn't work, none of that. So I'm like, shut up. Oh my it was weird. Like I FaceTimed him and he 
it's not connecting. So, uh, I finally, he called me on the sixth day. He was like, Dominique, I was like, what's up? And he was like, you know, thank you for this. Thank you for this. You the best son. And when he said that, I was like, he know, he, he, like he getting ready to go. He not coming out of this. But in the back of my head, I had where he told me if he got it, he not coming out. So the whole time I was mentally preparing myself, like, all right, he ain't coming out of this. Even though I still had the faith he would, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he told me. So he was like, you know, thank you, son, for this. Thank you for this. You're the best son I ever had. Woody, woody, woo. And I was like, all right, daddy. So boom, we got off the phone. And that was it. Didn't talk to him again. And I don't know how. I don't know how. It's crazy. Like, I still break down. I still have my moments, but. You seem so much at peace. I think it was that, that's why I said it. it was that conversation, that last conversation. I don't know why, but you know, my daddy had the messed up part. Mm -hmm. He got um, something real bad with his feet. Like he would get these sharp shooting pains where he wouldn't want to walk. Neuropathy. I can't even think of the name of it. And then they told him he had CB, CBOD, CBOD, but he didn't. We found out later COPD. on. COPD. Yeah. And I was just like, I don't know. I just think when I think of that, like seeing him, during that time and mm -hmm. just imagining what he like now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I had a dream. I think this is another reason. I had a dream. He yeah, asked my mom. I told her. He was at my mama's house. And he was living there. And so she gone out the picture. Mm -hmm. Just him. And he was walking fine. Talking fine. Like everything. It was just shocking to me in a dream. And then he was like, I'm okay. And hugged me. In the dream, and I woke up. I was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. And I, I, I couldn't sleep. I was up all night, like, mm -hmm. it's something crazy. But the hell I went through after his death with like his parents, his brothers, girlfriend, anything like that. I was just like, "All right, you know, this ain't." Why would you have to go through hell after your daddy done died and you a kid? You're not a kid. You're a grown man. I get that, but you're a child. Yeah, I was still Losing 17. your father. Right. You know, my mama said it was more like, they was put, I, don't, I didn't want that attention, first off. I don't, don't, if you're going to sympathize with me because of, how I say that? If, I, if I'm going to sit, like, let's say how you just told me your day died. Mm -hmm. I'm going to care because that's me. I'm not going to care because it's, it's an image. I'm going to look good caring for you. Other people going to think, don't care for me like that. Let me know. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Let me know that, like, if it's genuine, I want you to genuinely care for me. And it's about five people that when he died, mm -hmm. everybody else knows they wanted cars, money, mm -hmm. chains, mm -hmm. watches. Mm -hmm. uh, who in the house with you? Who This gun, that. This gun, that. They focuses was on that. My daddy's daddy didn't even come down for his funeral. And I ain't going to talk bad about him, you feel me? But he didn't even come down for his funeral. Mm -hmm. And that's his last child. So if my daddy, if he, if if I can't go to my son's funeral, what, what, what makes you think that there's something that I still need to? In my head, there's nothing for me to even. You want to take closure? It's over with. Everything that came with him, it died with him. So that's how I just keep it pushing. If you came with my daddy, you died with him, unless you solid, and I know that for sure. And it's about like I said, about five of them that's solid. I, I, we, we talking about this off camera because, baby, <laughs> let, me tell, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about, about them daddies passing away. That's why it's very important in our community, um, in the black household, to have life insurance, to have a will. Most definitely. Draw that stuff up because COVID came in crazy. We didn't know what COVID was or what it was going to do. And mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Rest in peace to your daddy. But with you, with you losing your daddy, um, how do you see your organization growing and shifting? I needed it. It might not make sense to you, but I needed it. I needed I needed him gone. Dominique, what? I needed him gone. It, like, my daddy spoiled me so much. Like, I feel like if he was still alive and I was 35 years old, I'd still be in his house. Spoiled. Mm. Now, the mindset I got now, like, when he died, I figured out what I wanted to do. I told him about my plans before he died. Mm -hmm. I told him what I wanted to do. He, he was like, you know, that's good. I'm going to see what I can do. Just knowing that he wanted to help me do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I know I really need to do it. I told my mama, 
And I didn't, and my mom and them, my mom believe in me, but my daddy, it's something different. It's like, when he would be like, I don't know, it's just something. Like, if he told, if I talked to him about something, mm -hmm. his demeanor wasn't, I don't know, let's think about it. His demeanor was, we gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. So, now it's just like, him gone, it's like, okay, I gotta get it done. I gotta own my toe and me. I gotta get this organization big. I gotta take care of it. Like, I got to. My mom and them, you know, feel me? So you you want to keep doing your organization, but your dream is to have your own towing company. Oh yeah, but my organization is still gonna be there for sure. Mm -hmm. If I got an office for the tour, my office across the street for the um home, homeless organization. But I think him. It sounds crazy, but I needed it. It was like a motivation mm -hmm. to to make me want to do it. Like I want to be able to say I told my daddy about my journey, and I did it. Mm -hmm. My eyes told him about a dream and we just laughed about it. And it didn't happen. That's deep, Dominique. It gotta it gotta happen. Like it gotta happen now. My mama was like, What you gonna do in your life? I said, just watch, I'm gonna be rich. I tell her every time, that's my little brother, I tell my time, I'm gonna be rich. Watch. I don't know how, but I'm gonna be rich. Mark my words when I was sitting next to you. I'm gonna be rich. I just know it. So what steps are you taking to get your towing company off the ground? All right, I ain't gonna lie. I had I had some money to to you know do what I need to do. I blew that. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't enough, but it could have got me somewhere. But you talk about stemming money or like money from the policy? Oh no, nah, money in general, like over time. Okay, okay. You know, just saving, working on it. Uh, but I blew that, <laughs> and then I'm I'm about to get it back though. I, I don't know why, but for some reason, I just feel like I got some money coming. I don't know why. Your hands itching. <laughs> have you have you thought about since you want a towing company? I, I know of one black towing company in Knoxville. But I don't know of any, and that's why I want one. I know of one. Um, Her kid went to the school I work at last year. But have you thought about reaching out to any tow companies to see if you could be an apprentice or, you know, shadow them just to get some... You know, make sure this is what I want to do because it is people out there that can get you loans. All you have to do, let me tell you what you can do. Do the co-starter program. You ever heard of that at the Knoxville Urban League? Somebody said something about the Urban League yesterday. I'm get my, I mean, today I'm going to get my haircut. Yeah, you got to just do the co-starter class. You write a grant when you write a proposal, and if you win, you can win like $5,000 or $10,000, and then they help you build your business model. But a tow company, you know, that's in high demand. It's dangerous, too. It's very dangerous. Uh, I talked to this dude. He on the, um, he was talking, I ain't told nobody yet, but I guess it's perfect time. Uh, he's a Hispanic. He got five trucks. He just bought five more. Mm. He was talking about giving me more. I don't think I got to do is buy tires for it. Okay, but he give you a truck, then what? How do you know what to do? <laughs> you on YouTube it? I watch all the, uh, what you guys, I'll be straight. I want to start with repos, though. Mm -hmm, but you still got to know how to hook it up. How to, oh, I know how to, how to do that. Okay. If, if I got a truck right now, I'll go out there and hook and book. That's going to be my slogan, hook and book. Hook and book. I like that. I don't know, though. I, I mean, right now, it might not sound like I got it together, but if you was just in my head and just knew my plans, I got it. I write down everything. My mama told me write down everything. Mm -hmm. That's how she started her business. She wrote down everything. I write down everything. So it's gonna work. What kind of business do your mama have? It's called. <laughs> yeah, it's called design, office, and administration. She do everything. Like, I can even. I can tell you a few things. Like interior designing. I guess that's what it's called. Wait, what is that? Like when you go in and you know put the couches and. Oh no no no, no 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 no! She do. Funeral programs, business cards. T uh, she stopped doing t-shirts. Uh, what? Weddings. Yeah, she playing weddings. Um, oh, okay. Plug mama in. She do everything. I'm talking about There's nothing she can't do. Nothing. That's another reason why I'm trying to tell you my motivation. Like, my daddy on the, uh, uh, my daddy on the moving company. Mm -hmm. My mama does administrative work. What? My granny on a daycare. It's it's too, it's too much for me to watch and see not to take something in and put it into my life, put it in action. Black entrepreneurship, you yeah, got it's it. Too much of it's base. right there. I've seen it. My granny had a daycare for I think thirty something years. Who was your granny? Anne Marie. 
What daddy was she girl? Bible's place. Okay. And then my daddy uh, had three tongue, uh, three moving companies. First one was On Call Movers, then it was Southeast something. And the last one was Budget Moving, and then my mama, you know, design. But all those businesses around me, and I don't watch them all. Like, mm -hmm. I can go in the office with my mama. If she's not there, I can do something that she can't. I can't design like her, but I can print it out, fold it, however you want. My granny, I can watch a kid. I know how to watch a kid. And my daddy, I got that moving skills. I know how to do that. So I was just like, they did all that. Why well, I can't do the towing? So did you take over any of your daddy's businesses? Or did you nah, move I mean, I should and I can, but mm -hmm. I don't know who's tied. I don't know who's tied to what. And you want your own thing. Yeah, so like if I could, if I could find out who's tied to what, like if he got any other people that just ain't, I ain't never seen, mm -hmm. maybe if there was none of them, maybe, but I don't know. I just haven't took the time to find out. I'm trying to, you know. Myself together. I got you. I got you. Now we talked about briefly you being a Christian and you know how I got to know you was the lady from your church. Yes. So have you been in the church like your whole life? Yep. Like, <laughs> yep. Do you sing? Cause you look like you could sing to me. You gonna get something? You sing something for me? <laughs> you look like you could sing. Not here. A little bit. So what do you like about church? Like what do you put faith? Into your organization, because I know your granny Bibles um, daycare, so that's faith, faith based. Uh, my church don't do enough mission work. Mm -hmm. They they don't like when I say this, but I'm gonna say it because they gonna see it. They don't do enough. My church don't do enough mission work. So when I seen it, I was like, hmm. Their mission work is baking a cake and bringing somebody to the church. That's not mission work. That's not, what are you doing to make people want to wonder? I want to make people wonder, why is this man coming to me out of nowhere? This big black dude coming to me out of nowhere, wanting to pray with me, wanting to give me clothes, wanting to do this for me. Mm -hmm. So you pray with the, with oh, the yeah. individuals when you give them stuff. Yeah, I just, like, when we do my events, I'm mainly taking the pictures. So you'll never catch me out to the side when I'm praying with somebody. But like I said, I don't do it to be, I don't do it to be, oh, he the one that, no, I do it because I want this from the heart. Mm -hmm. So I pray with them and let them know, like, look, my church is 2001 Western Avenue. Come. I, here's my number. I'll pick you up. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, it's definitely the church. So how can you put more mission work into your church? You know what I'm saying? Um. I want to. Personally, I want to bring my stuff into the church, mm -hmm. but I don't need it to be tried, be, be taken over. You know, well, if you're the creative stuff. director over it, it's your organization. Yeah, it don't always work like that, though. Okay. I could come in and say, we're going to go do this on the 10th, and then it gets reposted and took as they came up with it. They wanted to do it. When really, the five in my house came up with it, wanted to do it. It's from Bay Hearts. They, you know. I get that, but Terry, if it's Terry's give right. back organization, then it's Terry's give back organization. Exactly. So if your the people in your house came up with it, or somebody on Facebook came up with it, right. you're still the forefront of that organization. I don't, I don't know. I think it's necessarily. I don't want to. I don't want to partner with nobody. I mean, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Because I know you can get into a lot of trouble. I've seen it. You can get into a lot of trouble partnering with, with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to bring nobody in up under my name and they do something wrong. Mm -hmm. So like how you said, it's Terry gives back. Let's say my brother, I bought him in and he was somebody else. And he poisons somebody's food we gave. Mm -hmm. That's on me. That's not on him. That's on me. Because he was with me up under me. So I think that's what it is. I got you. I got you. It's the prayer of uh, you know, protecting your reputation. Yeah, I know my six, my circle ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. But who's to say that? I take that one chance and that one chance ruin it all. If somebody's being evil. Right. I got you. So let me ask you this. And everybody don't have a pure heart to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because some people, you do have to watch who you align with. Yeah. You know? And it sounds like you already know that. And I'm learning that at 30. So that's good that you have that at 18. But let me ask you this. How are you able, do you get permits when you go and feed the homeless? Mm -hmm. I thought you're supposed to have permits. I think you are, but I don't. My thing, are you going to move me? 
If I come set up outside his shop, is he gonna move me? No. <laughs> hey, that, that's funny you said that. The Salvation Army, the first event we ever did. A black dude got jealous because we was doing it. Walked up to me, pulled me. He was like, who's over this? I was like, me. I'm 16 at the time. Mm -hmm. Pulled me in the building. He was like, you know you didn't have my permission to sit up here. I'm His like, permission? Yeah, I said, are you going to move me? I was like, my, my daddy outside, you know, big guy should just stand there. So I'm like, are you going to move me? My daddy outside, too. He was like, nah, I ain't going to move you, but here's my card in case you need permission this time. All right, but I don't need permission. Ever since then, I go when I want to. If I go set up in front of Walmart tomorrow, I will. It's my choice. They ain't going to move me. That might sound bad, but. It um, do. No. Because what if somebody gets sick eating your food? Not that they were poisoned, but they get sick. That's why I stopped doing food. So far. I done moved over to clothes. Because for me, I think it's only like three to five bucks. I don't know, but. Because I got in trouble for giving that water. That's why I'm trying to figure out how you was giving out whole food. You got in trouble for giving that water? Yeah, they said at the Salvation Army. Where was that Salvation Army? Downtown? Yeah. I mean, great shirt. Yeah. He said you have to go. Well, it was a lady. In right. men. They said you have to go around the corner and that the people who's outside oh. there have to come find you. No. Nope. You cannot. They call it soliciting. He said you cannot solicit these waters here. I'm like, well, I'm not selling them. It's like 100 degrees out here. I'm just trying to get people water. They ain't going to mess with me because they know my car. They see us coming. They come. Do they not? They come. They see They see that. I ain't saying my color. I can say the color. They see that white truck. They see that. Um. They see the two white or or the blue coming, they know it's me. Matter of fact, I had a dude in 2018, I gave him a jacket off my back. Mm -hmm. I left my ID in it. I went back to a event four months later. He walked up to me and gave me the ID with the jacket on. Oh, wow. So they know me. And I mean, security, I ain't gonna lie, security walked up on me the first time and was like, you can't sit up here. I was like, do you want a hot dog? He said, yeah, and then he walked off and went and got in his car. And ever since then, he protected us, too. He said, when we come, he'll scoot his car up to the um, the bridge and watch. They know not to get on that, though, right there. I mean, my little brother's right there. And I mean, I do have the people that come through to get smart. Mm -hmm. But as long as you don't come behind that table, we good. I got tables just like this. Mm -hmm. I make sure my little brother's name is behind it. Because I can get to you, I can get to you behind the table, but I can't get to you. Somebody reach over across the table with them. I can get to them. I'm bigger than them. I can move them tables and get to them. I don't want them to get hurt either. So I got to be safe for my family mm -hmm. and me at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I haven't really had no problems with people telling me to move. I mean, eventually it's going to come. Somebody's going to see this and want to knock it down. Eventually it's going to come, but are you going to move me? That's my question. Hey, that should be the, are you going to move me? That's my question. Are you going to move Jesus me? Jesus moves. And, and, and people that's going to watch this, they know that's me. I'm for real about that. There's two things I don't play about. I don't play about my organization and my family. That's it. I'll go hard. I'll lay it down for them. So have you changed from the the, the, the little Terry, Nico, Dominique that was getting in trouble in school? Like, have you grown up, up out of that? Yeah. What do you think it was that was causing you to be so rah rah? I cared about people's opinion. Mm, mm, mm. And I can say that I did. Uh, I did. What I, kind of opinion? I mean, you precious. Uh, I don't know. I ain't never seen <laughs> it's a big dude like oh, this. Oh, that's a story. But look, I ain't never seen a a big dude. Y'all can't see his whole outfit, but I ain't never seen a big dude fly this. like this. Let me say this. My my mama has always been financially straight. Mm -hmm. My daddy, mm -mm. we we went through, I'm trying to tell you, that's my dog. We went through so much, like, my mama don't like to like me to talk about it, like, to, in front of her. Mm -hmm. But she always been financially straight. Like, there's five kids in her house. She ain't got no choice. But my daddy, he done fell on hard times, and nine times out of ten, I was with him during the hard times. Mm -hmm. So my mama would say, no, nah, your daddy was on hard times. No, we was on hard times together. That's how I tell her all the time. Like, me and my daddy stayed, I ain't going to say her name, my mama hated it, but we stayed in some apartments. My mama didn't know. My daddy didn't want my mama to know. He was embarrassed. But I'm like, daddy, who cares? It's us. 
We we don't went from paying six dollars in gas and quarters and dimes to filling the cars up with you know whenever we want to like. So you know we the struggle like yeah, and I always tell my mom she like you don't know the struggle, but like really I really do like. Mm -hmm. We done been do. I done slept in a car before. Not not to say that my mama didn't do nothing. You know, some people see this and say, "Well, his mama." No, it didn't have nothing to do with my mama. You and lived with your daddy at the time. It was my daddy. So what he went through, I went through with him. I'm not gonna be the one that's like, "All right, daddy, you sleeping in the car today? I'm gonna go to my mama's." No, it don't work like that. I could have, mm -hmm. but that's my daddy. I'm gonna sleep in the car with you. If if we ain't eating today, I'm not gonna eat with you. That's why I, I think that's pretty much where my motivation come come from with the homeless people. Like, I know I ain't gonna say I know to feel like be homeless because I ain't never been homeless, but. I know what it feel like to go without them. I was like, we were so bad at one point in time, me and my daddy, that we were switching shoes. I would wear his shoes to school Monday and give him mine. Because mm. his looked better and he didn't want me to go to school like that. But, you know, but then we, he did we, he realized like, this ain't gonna work. So he started his business and then he really went out on the limb when he started his business. Like he, he, did, he sold his car, when you have a car, Mm. And it worked. I was just like, so when but God. when it worked, he people wonder why I got so much shoes now. Like when it, that's I tell you, I promise, I kid you not. When when it worked, when he got his first big check, mm -hmm. he bought me twenty pairs of shoes. I already had. I got out of school. He had five hidden in the store. He had hid five, and it took me and was like, here, here's some money. Go get whatever you want. Cause he knew like I stayed, that's why I say I stayed down with my daddy. I didn't, so many people done, done laugh, done, you feel me? Nah, you can't do that now. So now, it's, I'm gonna flex on you a little bit. People say I flex too much, but I don't, I mean, I don't flex really. I just know how I feel to not have it. You very cocky, but not in a bad cocky kind of way. You're very confident with yourself. Yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely like that. That's what, my confidence, that's what my daddy loved about me. You tell me all the time, your confidence. I could have on a dirty t-shirt, dirty pants, dirty shoes. You can't tell me I'm dirty. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, to me right now, I'm the cleanest one in the room. That's what I'm going to tell you. With that dirty shirt, I'm the cleanest one in the room. Your mama dusty. That's going <laughs> <laughs> to be my response. But I love it. Because you definitely command attention. You definitely are. You a big guy, but you like a bright light. Like when you was telling me the stuff that happened when you was younger, I would have never guessed because you're so sweet and well mannered. You know, I love that. I think that's why I told you him dying too, mm -hmm. and us us going through what we went through to see what we did. I mean, whatever he did, that was his choice, and he, you know, you live your life, you make your bed hard, you lay in it. But I got to lay in it with him. Mm -hmm. I got to see. All right, if I make this decision, this was gonna happen. We had a car there. Every time we went five minutes down the road, we had to pour water in. Me and my daddy had to get out and pour water in. Then after that, I didn't see that no more. He bought me a car. He bought him four cars. Like, he didn't want me to. He knew, all right, I know Dominique can't feel good walking to the school looking like that today. But mm -hmm. when I but you could, I wouldn't let him know that. To him, daddy, you're doing a good job. Yeah, I might steal a pair of your shoes and wear them to school real quick. But, like, I don't know. It's just different. When you go through it, it's different. Now, my mama, she's like, you ain't, you ain't do that. <laughs> he went through it. Nah, mama, we, yeah. we went through it together. That's my daddy, though. And I would do it vice versa. If my mama, if it was flipped, I would have went through it with her, too. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have known that, though. You wouldn't better tell that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to ask you, do you date? Do you have a significant other? I get some real. What? <laughs> Look, you see him laughing. I get some real. I ain't gonna lie though. I talked to somebody right now that I talked to like two years ago. And we grown now. So it's different. What I get some real mean, Dom? Oh, stop. I used to get some real. Because she gonna see this. I used to get some real. I, was like, talk, I used to like talking to everybody. One person wasn't enough. What's your type? Smile. I don't know. You gotta have a cute smile. Are you like teeth? Nah. I mean, yeah, that's that's a plus, but I don't know. It's just like if I get nervous around you, you it. That's it, there we go. Got you. Like who I talk to now, when I be around her, I'll be like, ooh. 
<laughs> Not the woo. <laughs> I was like, woo. But she cool though. My mama know her. And she in the church. That's a plus. Okay. But she don't have to be in the church. She don't have to be. But no, that's just a plus. But okay. See, my daddy was a hoe though. <laughs> we'll talk about no, how I, old was the no, that's Yeah, cool. he was. He was. He Ooh. And when he, he settled down probably about last year. But he didn't settle down. <laughs> that wasn't it. I knew my daddy. He still had his little uh fish in the sea. Mm. And those are the ones that showed me support when he died. Ain't that crazy? Mm. Give me the ones. You need fifty dollars for lunch today? Fifty? Yeah, thank you, Cindy. Thank you. That's what I'm fish in the sea. He had plenty of them. You are so messy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get out of here with Dominique. Look, and that piece of bread was hard as a brick. Anything else you want to talk about before we get up out of here? I'll be back for part two. You'll be back for part two? Yeah, you like it this time. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. <laughs> y'all need a support, supporter, though. They coming. They coming on in. Come break bread with me. Let's break bread. Huh? Hey, but yes, I love y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what y'all thought about old Dom here. He's crazy, y'all. I loved it. Y'all have a blessed day. One.